I spent thousands of dollars on private jets, and these are the three things I've learned. Because I don't know about you, I used to think that was crazy. I'm like, dude, why on earth would you spend $1,000 or $2,000 on a flight or more to fly somewhere when you could just pay Southwest Airlines like 200 bucks to fly there? And what I've realized is there's three distinct advantages that you can gain from flying private, you can afford it. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys some actual footage of me on the private jet. So you know, I'm not just making this up because there's some YouTubers that they're just like, they claim things they've never even done, which is absurd to me. And I don't wanna do that. So you'll see at the end of this video, some videos of me getting on the plane, talking about my experience and all that. But let's talk about the three reasons why I recommend it. Number one is time savings, okay? When I fly private, I have to show up to the airport 10 to 15 minutes before my flight actually leaves. When I pull up to the airport, they have someone come and they take my car and they park my car for me. And then they take my bags and they carry my bags for me onto the plane. That's all I have to do. I literally just get in a, a golf cart, they drive me to the plane and I walk on the plane. That's it. That's the extent of my entire effort when I show up to fly private. When you fly commercial, as I'm sure all of you know, you have to show up like an hour and a half before or maybe two hours before. And then you go through security and then you know you get yelled at by TSA to take your belt off and start stripping and it's like really weird, right? And then you get in like this machine and you like put your hands up and then they always find something wrong, right? They're like, oh, you know, you, you're acne cream. Like we need to take you into custody. And you're like, dude, I just wanna have clean skin. And they're like, ah, yeah, we don't care, right? It, it makes no sense, okay? It's, it's completely ridiculous. I mean, it makes sense from a standpoint you wanna keep people safe, but at the same time, not very time efficient. So that's the biggest benefit right there. Number two, the stress saving. So I just kind of talked about going through TSA. I really don't like being stressed out while I'm traveling. You know, I don't know about you, have you ever flown somewhere or traveled somewhere and just been exhausted by the time you got there? And the reality is like, if you think about it logically, like what did I do all day? I sat in a tube and read or watched a movie. Like, why am I tired? I should not be tired. I should not be exhausted. I really didn't do anything physical, but the, all the stress and the adrenaline, all these chemicals running through your body because you're like in the state of fight or flight because you're getting yelled at by, you know, TSA for drinking water. Okay, it's like, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, okay? It, it increases your stress levels and it makes the whole day a lot less productive than it could be. Versus when you fly private, you show up, there is no security. You just walk on the plane. You get there faster because the plane goes faster. You know, you have all the leg room you want in the world. You don't have to worry about like having a, a Karen sitting next to you that like she's trying to take the armrest and you're like having an arm, you know, wrestling battle with her to, to see who gets the armrest, okay? Like you don't have to do any of that. You just sit wherever you want to sit and uh, you do whatever you want to do. I, and by the way, one of the things that always bugged me about commercial flights, for some reason, you have to have your seat in like the full upright position when you take off when you land. And I have no idea what that is. They, every time I ask one of the flight attendants about it, they just say, oh, it's an FAA rule. And I'm like, okay, but why is it an FAA rule? And they say, oh, we don't know. It's just an FAA rule. And I said, okay, well, that, we just have rules. We don't even know what the purpose of them is for, okay? Guess what, when you fly private, you can be, ha literally turn your chair into a bed. Nobody cares because it's your own plane. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the experience and specifically the experience in flying with that level of people. When you're flying private, or in my case, I'm not flying technically private, but semi-private, meaning there's one or two other people on the plane. The people that are affording these flights that are paying thousands of dollars to fly somewhere, they're usually pretty successful people. Just case in point, my first time I ever flew somewhere in a semi-private type of jet, the gentleman I sat next to, he was a very successful real estate developer and worth probably 50 million. And we literally chatted there for about an hour about what he thinks is going to happen with the economy, what he thinks is going to happen with the real estate market, how he's preparing his investments, all of that. And I'm sitting there taking notes, like, dude, this guy's a genius. He was 70 in his mid 70s. I think he was just turning 75. And it's like a ton of things I can learn from him, right? Just by even being in an environment. So whether you're flying semi private and you're in a semi private airport and you're meeting other people that are flying private, or you're flying completely private and you're not seeing anyone else on the plane, but again, you're in that private airport and you're meeting people there. Like the people that are flying private, they're very successful, they're very smart, and you can learn a ton from them and make some awesome connections. So those are the biggest three reasons why I really don't ever want to fly commercial ever again if I don't have to, although I'm sure at some point I will, unfortunately. But I will admit to you too, like when I fly commercial now, a little heartbreaking because like I'm getting in line at TSA and I'm like, oh gosh, I have to do this again. I really don't want to do this, right? And listen, I don't show you this stuff because I want to flex on you or I want to show off. I'm showing you this stuff because I want to show you what's possible if you put in the work on yourself and on your career and your business. You know, ultimately you can accomplish anything you want to in life. It's not a matter of whether you can, it's a matter of whether you will, right? Ultimately, perseverance counts for far more than potential does. And everybody gets the potential, it's whether you're gonna to persevere to see this happen. With that being said, hope you've enjoyed the video. Here are some clips of me flying private, and uh, you can see for yourself what it's like.
hopefully that's inspired you guys. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, you guys wanna see more videos like this, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And if you don't know, on some of these videos, we actually give away some free courses to people that want to learn about you know, how to make money, surplus funds specifically. And normally we charge for these, but again, for the first couple of people that watch these videos, we'll get them out for free. So underneath this video, there'll be a link for a Google form. If you're one of the first three people to fill that out, we will email you access to one of our courses for free. And if you'd like to be the next person next time we're doing that, subscribe and hit the notification bell because you have to be one of the first people to watch the video all the way through to see if you win one of the free courses. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you on the next one.